Uh, well, Save Our Scrolls began um, in 2006 with a, a Heritage Lottery grant, mm -hmm. um, and uh, through through that time we were, we were very successful and uh, achieved lots of lots of excellent things to the point where um, we got a bit of an extension from Heritage Lottery and carried on for an extra extra year. Yeah. Um, but uh, obviously that that can't last last forever. So we had a bit of a sort of uh, there was a review of Red Squirrel Conservation. We looked at what everybody was doing mm -hmm. um, from the volunteers right the way through to the government organisations. Um, and that kind of gave us a, a refocus and so as we go through into to phase two we've been uh, sort of relaunched and renamed as Red Squirrels Northern England yeah. so doing much much the same things really um, but with a, a slightly more sort of coordinated approach bringing on board some other other partners and organizations. We need to make sure that the Red Squirrels and the Grey Squirrels stay separate and don't come into contact. Um, right. The Grey Squirrel causes a problem, uh, well two problems. Firstly, they're a bigger animal, so they outcompete for food. Um, mm -hmm. And secondly, they um, are, are carriers of this um, squirrel pox virus, which is right. deadly to red squirrels. Mm -hmm. So the only way to make sure that doesn't happen is to keep the reds and the greys apart, which does mean dispatching grey squirrels in areas where they're going to come into contact yeah, in that interface. Yeah. Um, but research is being done into um, sort of vaccines as well. So there's other things okay. going along in the pipeline, but first and foremost, that, that's what we need to do. But of course, sure. we need to make sure that everybody is on board with that and understands why we're doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a huge amount of um, community involvement and education as well. Yeah. We um, put it into uh, really making sure people are understanding what's happening uh, yeah. and especially in their own local areas so they know you know what hap what's happening with their red squirrels in mm. their areas helping them um, sort of become trained up so they can survey woodlands for example so they okay. can really send in that data which then feeds back into yeah. the conservation yeah. um, efforts so it's about sort of volunteering community engagement um, it also goes into um, sort of raising awareness on a, a, a more sort of um on a, on a wider scale, um, various promotions and schemes yeah. that we run. Again, trying to make sure that everybody's on board. We're there for the landowners and land managers who mm -hmm. have red squirrels and want to do something to help. So we provide advice on um, grants that are available to them, the yeah. suitable habitat management, times of year when they can fell, um, all that sort of thing. So we okay. provide advice to them as well. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Um, tourism uh, and squirrels are inextricably linked. People mm. love to come to see red squirrels, um, yeah. and they're they're a massive draw. And Cumbria, in total, you know, is a, is a real wildlife haven. Mm. And red squirrels are an integral part of that. Beatrix Potter and Squirrel Nutkin, of course, are Cumbrian based. So yeah. people come here to see red squirrels, and. Um, you know, we've worked with Bed and Breakfast, for example, who have red squirrels coming into their gardens and they say that they get people coming specifically to stay there because they know yeah. they can watch the red squirrels on the feeders outside the breakfast table. Yeah. So, massively strong link there and people mm. want to help the squirrels that they come on holiday to see. So, yeah, very, very well linked and well loved squirrels.